Foundation can kidney damage actually be repaired? Well, most doctors might give you a quick and resounding nope to this question. Recent studies are beginning to challenge that old belief. And while we still don't know for sure if kidney cells can actually regenerate, one thing is clear. Significant improvements in kidney function are possible in all stages of the disease. And today, I'm going to show you exactly how to make that happen. Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and in this video, I want to share with you what steps are 100% necessary to take if your goal is to beat CKD. In the past few years, we've seen incredible progress in the treatment of a disease once thought untreatable. But here's the problem. While science moves forward, many doctors remain stuck in old ways of thinking. The result? You are the one that has to do all the heavy lifting. But don't worry, today we will see what actually works. Now I want to be upfront, not everyone will improve their kidney function. In some cases, the focus should be on preventing further decline. But here's the exciting part. Many patients are able to improve. So here's the big question. What makes the difference between improving and not improving? Well, in my experience, probably the biggest factor here is stopping what's causing the damage to the kidneys. Keep this in mind, all right? If there is kidney damage, there is something that is causing it and we need to get rid of that cause. And yes, I know you were probably expecting me to say diet right off the bat because I'm like renal diet through the right diet. The renal diet. Start with the diet. <laughs> But here is the thing, a well-planned renal diet is absolutely designed to stop the cause of that damage. So to see real improvement to beat this disease, you need to tackle the source of the damage. And trust me, when you take that step, the results can be truly remarkable. Let me share a story of one of my patients. She was in stage 4 of kidney disease and her doctors had already prepared her for the worst. But she wasn't ready to give up. She wanted a second opinion. What we did together wasn't magic. It was about finding and addressing the root cause of her kidney damage. So we made a plan to tackle that directly. It was diabetes in her case. Through diet, supplements, and lifestyle changes. And do you know what happened? Over the course of six months, this patient didn't just slow the progression of her kidney disease. Her kidney function improved. EGFR went from 18 to 27 and suddenly, dialysis was no longer a looming certainty. This kind of transformation happens when you take action. This is why I think that you can beat this disease. This is why I'm telling you to never let your diagnosis take control of your life. Whether you've just been diagnosed or have been battling kidney disease for years, you have more power than you realize. It's time to use that power and to take control. How do we do that? By stopping what's causing the damage. So let's focus on what actually works now, starting with, of course, the most common cause of kidney damage. Let's say you have diabetes. What actually works in order to stop the damage diabetes causes? Of course, dietary and lifestyle changes are non-negotiable when it comes to fighting diabetes. Before we talk about that salad you're definitely excited about, let's talk about something spicier. This is a little known remedy that's really making waves in the world of diabetes right now. In a recent review of 24 studies involving 918 very lucky people, those using this remedy saw a massive drop in creatinine levels and were able to significantly lower both proteinuria and cholesterol levels. And what's this magical remedy? 
This is Panax Noto Ginseng, an Asian remedy that's finally making its way into the modern treatment for diabetes. In fact, recent research shows that the antioxidants found in this remedy are extremely effective at protecting the kidneys. It can also boost blood flow, which is an amazing way of improving kidney function. And as we have seen, it has worked wonders for 1918 diabetes and kidney disease sufferers. Now, how does it tackle diabetes, you ask? Well, ginseng has a serious impact on how your body processes and absorbs glucose. It basically gives insulin resistance the middle finger and says, Not today, Satan! Now guys, if you want to try a ginseng supplement, please keep in mind that not all ginseng is created equal. There are mainly three types of ginseng and while all of them have some health benefits, only one was used to lower creatinine in those 1918 patients. This one in the middle is Panax Red Ginseng, rare and expensive. This one on the right is Asian Ginseng, easy to find but it's the budget knockoff, not our superstar. Now, take a look at this one on the left. This is Panax Noto Ginseng. This is what you want if you have diabetes and it should be pretty easy to find as an extract as well. Just make sure it says Noto Ginseng and not just ginseng on the bottle. And of course, there are other supplements that can be extremely effective for people with diabetes. Berberine is probably my favorite. You know how doctors love prescribing metformin like it's candy? Well, turns out sometimes nature has been doing it better for centuries. In fact, berberine is completely natural and it has many of the same properties of metformin. It may lower fasting and post meal glucose levels by more than 30% and it can also help with cholesterol and blood pressure. I know several PCPs here in Italy that are prescribing berberine instead of metformin to their patients. Something else that's often recommended, this one mostly by naturopaths, is chromium picolinate. This is an essential nutrient that directly treats the root cause of diabetes. Chromium directly reduces insulin resistance and helps blood glucose control according to research, which is why this is often recommended as a supplement. And you can find it in trace amounts in grains, but the therapeutic dose typically consists of 1000 micrograms of chromium picolinate taken in two doses during the day. And that's 20 to 40 times more than what you can find in foods. So let's be real, you're not going to eat enough quinoa to hit the therapeutic dose. I mean, ain't nobody got time to eat that many grains but chromium supplements are readily available now guys these supplements can really help but of course they are not always enough to keep diabetes under control yeah time for that salad talk but don't worry and like your salad i'll keep it short and sweet so in order to keep your blood sugar levels in check there is no way around it lifestyle changes are yeah, I said it. Time to dust off those running shoes and actually use them for something other than letting them become a spider's luxury condo. Exercise isn't just important, it's mandatory. In fact, let me be clear here, I'll never stop nagging you about this because exercise directly hits the root cause of the problem. And yeah, I get it, nobody wants to exercise. I mean, we all have excuses, right? I have a busy day, I forgot my gym clothes, my dog needs emotional support after watching Marley and me. Sure, we've heard them all. But no matter how creative the excuses, I'll still say, get up and move. Now, if you have diabetes, CKD, and maybe even thyroid issues, then yes, exercise might feel like climbing Mount Everest with a backpack full of bricks. So yeah, I'll understand if you tell me you don't have the energy, don't worry. But the benefits of any kind of exercising, walking, regularly included, are so out of this world, it's worth it. Seriously, so even if you break a sweat just thinking about standing up from that chair, try! And of course, the diet is just as important here. Eating a smart diet full of fruit, vegetables, and whole grains can really make a difference with CKD and with diabetes in particular. Guys, if you are going to change only one thing in your life with the goal of improving your kidney health, make it be the diet. 
The importance of the diet. <laughs> now, when it comes to the diet for CKD and diabetes, many people are confused. They have been told to be careful with or even to avoid carbs because they have diabetes. Maybe they have heard also to be careful with high potassium foods and probably to limit protein as well. And guys, the problem here is that all these recommendations can help. They all have a basis in truth. Yeah, and to make things worse, you absolutely need to have a diet you can actually follow long term if your goal is protecting your kidney health. So your diet does not just need to work on paper, but it must also work on your table. What to do? Well, if you are interested in starting a diet that's easy to follow, tested and personalized for your very own needs, consider sending me an email. My address is Catherine at newhopeforkidneypatients.com and I'll also include a link below in description so you won't have trouble finding me. I'm currently accepting new consultations but slots are filling up quickly. Email me today and take the first step toward improving your kidney health together. In fact, I'm now including a diet just like this one with all my counseling sessions and frankly, I believe it may make your life a lot easier. Okay, up next, let's talk about the second most common cause of kidney damage, high blood pressure. So question, what can really help with high blood pressure? Now, here's the deal. If you book a consultation with me and your blood pressure is floating above 130 over 80, I'm not going to hand you a trophy or a pat on the back. <laughs> nope. You'll likely walk away with a recommendation for one of my favorite kidney-friendly supplements, garlic extract. This is an amazing supplement. Garlic itself is an incredible food for kidney health. It reduces cholesterol, fights diabetes, has antioxidant properties, and can really do wonders with high blood pressure. HBP from now on, since I don't want to be here all night. But let's talk about the incredible effect effect of garlic on BP. I've seen reduction up to 20 over 8 or 9 millimeters of mercury in some cases and that's huge. Try it if you don't believe me. And don't get me wrong, if you have the patience and determination to swallow raw minced garlic every day, possibly twice a day, go for it. It's one of the best things you can do for your kidneys. Unfortunately, it doesn't really taste good and for some people, taking raw garlic every day gets old fast. The alternative is garlic supplementation. These pills have no taste and they are also going to cause less body odor than using raw garlic, which is a huge plus. So absolutely consider garlic extract supplementation. Something else that deserves a standing ovation, magnesium. Oh yes, this wonder mineral is like the Swiss army knife of supplements. Not only does it help with high blood pressure, but it also takes care of inflammation, diabetes, cholesterol levels, muscle cramps, insomnia, and more. And the reason why it's so amazing? Because it solves a common nutritional deficiency in CKD patients. And ideally, I would like to recommend all my patients to take 400 milligrams magnesium oxide every day. But here's the catch. If you're in the advanced stages of CKD, you might want to be careful with this one because while having too high levels of magnesium is almost as rare as spotting Bigfoot, it can still happen. Magnesium is still mostly cleared by the kidneys, all right? This is why some patients may have too high levels of this mineral. And while that's not nearly as dangerous as having too low magnesium, it's still not something we want. The solution, make sure you are being tested for magnesium levels, especially if you are in stage four or five CKD. Now guys, when it comes to HBP, there is something I don't talk about a lot here on Double Okini, but that really needs to be mentioned. I'm talking about drug-resistant high blood pressure. This has become more common in recent years and it's a serious problem. This happens when a patient takes three medications or more for high blood pressure and well, they don't work. Blood pressure remains high and kidney damage cannot be stopped. Usually, doctors will add more medications or up the dose, causing even more side effects. Sometimes, they just give up and tell you to prepare for dialysis. Question, is there a solution to this issue that doesn't involve dialysis? 
Well, actually, yes, there are natural ways to control HBP that also work in those cases when the medications failed. First of all, the diet. Now, when it comes to controlling HBP, the diet is of crucial importance. In fact, in some cases, HBP is directly caused by excess body weight. In those cases, starting a weight loss diet can really, really make a difference and patients will be able to suspend many of their medications just because they have lost weight. But of course, a lot of patients have high blood pressure even if they are not overweight. That happens because the kidneys are supposed to regulate fluid balance in the body and the RAS system. When they do not do that as efficiently as they should, HBP is a direct consequence. Now, there are two dietary tips I want to give to anyone who is suffering from HBP, but especially those that do not respond well to drugs. First of all, be very careful with your fluid intake. A lot of patients do not drink enough water during the day, and this will force their kidneys to to reabsorb water instead of passing it in urine. Yeah, that's a lot of extra work for the kidneys and will also contribute to HBP. Now, other patients, those in the advanced stages, may have a fluid intake restriction. If that restriction is not followed, HBP is the most visible consequence. So yeah, drink the amount of water that's right for you. Something else that's crucial for HBP is sodium intake, of course. So be careful, especially with packaged foods. Some brands have discovered that they can put a ton of salt in the junk food they sell and that no one notices that the food is too salty if they also add a pinch of sugar. One example of this is V8 vegetable juice that contains more than 600 milligrams of salt per can. But of course, that's just one of many dangerous products that hides in the supermarket shelves. Now, something else that those patients that cannot lower their blood pressure despite taking tons of medications should consider is getting checked for vitamin D levels. Vitamin D is extremely effective at protecting the kidneys from a lot of things actually, but from high blood pressure in particular. It has to do with the way the renin angiotensin aldosterone system works and how it cannot work properly without enough vitamin D. I won't go too much in depth about that. Just make sure you are being checked for vitamin D levels and that you are supplementing accordingly. And guys, if you want to learn more about the stuff your doctor should be checking you for, but that probably is not. My video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Take care. Bye-bye.